Welcome back to The Eye. Now, this is the guy that I've been trying to get. Cedric Porter um, from the World Potato Markets um, is, is the guy to talk about what's going on globally, what's going on with Brexit, what's going on with agriculture. But first, I got to start. You reported on uh, President Trump talking to the Farm Bureau. Um, give it to me, no holes barred. <laughs> What was going on? What did he say? Is it good news for farming? Is it bad news? Or is it just a bunch of rhetoric that, you know, we're going to ignore? Yeah. Thanks, Phil. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was actually phoned up by the BBC this morning to do a, an interview with them on their radio program. But we had booked you first. Oh, you booked okay. me first. Okay. And I said I, 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 might be able to, I might be able to slot you in. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, I've got more important people to speak yeah. to. Um, so, um, so, yeah, they, they were asking what, what, was, what was the, uh, the reaction and what, what's perhaps the relationship between farmers and the Trump administration. And I think the feedback that I've got, that it was a, it was a real barnstorm, literally a barnstorming um, performance. And, and speech, uh, but I think there's people want a bit of substance behind the, the rhetoric now. You know, we've heard about supporting farmers. Uh, there's been the tax cuts, which would probably be good for farmers, uh, and I think it's quite a lot of concern about trade. Um, the particularly NAFTA, what will happen to NAFTA? Very important markets for Canada uh, and Mexico, uh, and some of the relationships with other markets around the world. This is where the growth in the um, in the U.S. Uh, farm, farm economy will come over time is, is, is sales overseas. Uh, so I think farmers here are thinking if, that, if that's under threat, uh, then however much rhetoric and support and whatever you've got from them, that actually they need to be doing the business. They need to be selling to new markets. And I think that's what they're concerned about. So it's, it's, it's difficult. It's going to be difficult for him. He's got his midterms coming up. Uh, and of course, what is about three quarters of the uh, farming uh, rural lobby voted for him, so it's a strong. So he'll want to see a strong showing in, in come November, uh, and if he doesn't get that, then then more and more questions starting to be asked. Uh, so it's a bit of a balancing act for him, um, and I, I expect the, you know that his advisors behind the scenes uh, will be concerned about that and seeing what they can do to to perhaps reassure and actually give some real substance to their farming. Community. So what I'm hearing from you is we didn't hear a lot of real substance from no, this presentation. I think I think that's what what, what what we had. It was more, you know, you, it's great. Thanks for voting for me. You're privileged to have me to vote for. Uh, almost sort of campaign speech rather than a policy strategy speech, which right. what, what what people want now. I think. So uh, it, not only now, but also leading into the farm bill. Mm, this yes, could yeah. have huge implications yeah, yeah. because everybody's saying, you know, what's going to happen with the farm bill, the next farm yeah, bill? Yeah, well, we've got a, that's a, I mean, that's a, it's, we've got those two key, uh, two key events, I suppose. We've got the farm bill and then we've got the, the midterms as well and both sort of interacting uh, and farming. I, I, farming's a strange industry. It's, it's not, it's a, it's a sort of a, a heart industry, if you like. People, not, a lot of people aren't farmers, right. but they know farmers. They, you know, their great grandparents are farmers and whatever. So everyone, my grandfather's a dairy yeah, farmer. Yeah, yeah. everyone, yeah. everyone's, you know, they, they like to be related to a farmer, uh, and so they like to see the farmers doing well and being looked after. Uh, and I think, you know, if he could, if, if he seemed to be talking the talk but not walking the walk with it, then I think that the, you know, the, 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 the farming lobby could start to move against him. So let's expand beyond just the U.S. for a second. Um, over the past year, yeah. uh, much to my surprise, China has seemed to cleaned up its act when it comes to food. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was in China a couple of years ago, and I visited the most uh, modern uh, and high-quality dairy plant I've ever, I've, I've ever been to. And I think, I think you know, China... China is, is becoming an exporting nation as well as an importing nation, uh, and, it, and its own public, uh, it's, it's a strange system, China. You've got a uh, one, one uh, party state, right. but that one party state uh, that has to keep the people happy. So it has to see people, their, their, the economy has to be growing, their, their pay has to be growing, and all those sort of things. Uh, and of course, you know, food safety is such a key issue for them, and particularly uh, an increasingly urbanized uh, society. It, it's, it's really important that they're feeding the people properly. We had the terrible um, uh, uh, baby milk scandal a few years ago. With the melamine. Yeah, yep. that's right. You know, with, 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 with children actually dying. Uh, and and for, for China, it's about keeping as, as many people uh, satisfied and as happy as possible. 
because they know from other places if you start to get um, dissent and you start to get uh, people un un unhappy, and food is often at the key of these. You know, we've seen that with with, uh, with uh, Egypt uh, recently, and. Uh, uh, and we've seen that with Iran, but actually food is the key issue. If you see your food price going Absolutely. up, your food quality going down, then there's the, there can be dis, uh, discontent on the streets. So, so we just did a report on uh, China when it comes to their poultry industry. Yeah. And they seem to have made major advances when it comes to food safety. And also now they're actually testing facial recognition for chickens. Yes. Uh, they, they have this program yeah. for 100,000 chickens <laughs> and so on. So. Should we be be um, aware that China is going to become this food and agriculture powerhouse using technology in ways that maybe we've never thought of? Yeah, I, th I think. I mean, I think you always have to be aware uh, of what your competition is doing, uh, and and uh, and respond to that, and and. And not necessarily think your own agriculture, your own production is the world's best. It can be the world's best, but you have to but, keep on right. proving it is and looking at what they're doing. And I think, you know, some of the technology and some of the money that's in China, uh, the, the resources they have, uh, it's, it's got the money to do a lot of these things. Um, and I suppose, I mean, China has been a, a big market for the U.S. Uh, fry mm -hmm. industry. You're, you're actually starting to see the uh, U.S. fries to China going down a bit uh, as we see um, them producing more of their own. Uh, and you're seeing competition from Europe uh, selling fries into China as well. So, so things change. And I think the lesson of the last two, th two or three years is things change very, very quickly. And you need to be on top of those trends. You need to be responding to those trends as quickly as possible. And if you're not, you're going to be you're going to be left behind. Sure. So, last question. Let's go on to the other side of the yep. U.S. and talk about Brexit. Yep. You know, there's been a lot of conversation about it. Um, you know, if we look at the ag market between the EU, between um, the U.K., Scotland, yep. we're still not sure what's going on, and the U.S. Are we in a mess here? Uh, I think it, uh, Brexit is, in the, is a lot more complicated than people thought, thought, it, was, uh, thought it might be. It's 45 years since the UK has been in the EU, and untangling a lot of those relationships and a lot of the rules and regulations uh, is going to be very, very difficult. Um, in terms of trade, uh, I think it's about 70% of UK food in, um, imports come into the EU. The UK is only 60% self-sufficient in food. It's the world's largest potato market. Uh, import market by value, uh, even bigger than the U.S., uh, and so so it, it, there's some very big issues here. It's, the U.K. is not a big exporter of food in terms of um, U.S. and U.K. relationships. U.S. exports about around nearly about three billion pound, uh, dollars worth of uh, food, forestry, fishery, uh, and it's a similar amount that goes from the U.K. to to the U.S. in terms mainly in terms of high high value, high quality goods, lots of whiskey. Um, things like that. So uh, I think there will be some opportunities in the next 10 years. Uh, and I think the US will be wanting to do uh, a trade deal with a, uh, a post EU UK. And I think the UK will also want to be doing those trade deals with other parts of the, of the world. There are fears in, in the UK amongst farmers that uh, that might then mean a lot of uh, US grain coming in, a lot of US poultry. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of mistalk, a lot of misinformation, I think, about the washing of, in chlorine of, of poultry. Um, uh, and, and that's been a sort of a, a live issue. There's the, the GM, the biotech issues. Uh, UK at the moment is, is, has very little biotech. Um, uh, and there's concern about, uh, about that. So there are some issues on food safety and food assurance that will have to be ironed out. But I do think there will, there's opportunities on both sides of the Atlantic to be, to be exporting either side. We'll continue our conversation tomorrow. tomorrow. Good in thing. the meantime, check out World Potato Markets so you know everything that's going on in the world about potatoes. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with the eye.